It's the takeover. It's the takeover right here on CBJ Radio. We're always bringing you the coolest artists on Wednesday nights. And tonight, we're knocking it out of the park. Seattle, Americana Band, Irish Drive. They just dropped their new album yesterday. It's called Loved and Lonely. The Austin Sessions Volume 1. We debuted their first single, What Makes You Beautiful, last Friday night on the Request Show Live right here on CBJ Radio. And now tonight, we're excited. We have all three guys from Iris Drive. Singer, guitarist Ryan. We got guitarist Matt and drummer Andy on the show. First, guys, thanks for coming on. Thanks, for having us. Let's go back in history a little bit. How did we get started? Did Ryan start the band? Did Matt? How did we meet each other? Give us the history, guys. Well, we uh, um, so we go all the way back. Uh, we uh, we actually grew up together all the way back in preschool. Oh and, wow! And we've been we've been playing music together since high school. Iris Drive formed uh, the 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 three of us. We played in a number of different bands over the last couple decades, but uh, um, Iris Drive formed out of us trying to take a new take on. Um, combining Seattle rock music with the Americana and country style. So we put together a few songs, 10 songs, and then we went down to Nashville and recorded our first record. Time boxed ourselves at five days front to back to finish the record, and we got it all the way done. Hold on here, because you guys were not 20. What the hell happened from when we got out of college or whatever until... Was it other bands? Did you finally say, fuck it, let's, let's be in a band with guys I know? what now we've always been the three of us have always played together we uh, we played in um between kind of between college i guess about probably 10 years ago um everybody played in their different played in different bands um then we got back together about 10 10 years ago uh with a um, an actual alternative rock band a full rock metal band out here <laughs> and then this came this was kind of an offshoot of that Nice. Well, and you kind of mentioned it, the East Coast, West Coast vibe. The first one you did in Nashville, and you said you got your sound kind of from the Nashville sound. Why Nashville? Was it to mix it up or to create a different sound? Yeah, we went we went down to Nashville to, you know, we being from the Seattle area, we know we know the the Northwest, um, the Northwest indie music scene, um, obviously the Seattle music scene. Um, and we wanted to break away geographically. To a different area that was going to really challenge us and really challenge us from not only our songwriting our instrumentation but also just the community being down there and it was really cool i mean we got i mean you know it was it was the the, the first time that andy was able to play a hand he jumped on and had to learn it right there in the studio we we met a bunch of different really really cool people that really influenced our sound especially our producer down there dustin um, so he's our producer and engineer and he really helped kind of shape the sound as well so it was, it was a really cool way to get away from um being steeped in the seattle area and continuing to write seattle area rock yeah and you said five days so were the songs done how's the songwriting process because do you and matt get together and play guitar how does it work a lot of the i think most of it is ryan's songwriting and me and andy kind of contributing pretty much everything was born i think with ryan the concepts basic ideas of all the songs i think almost all of them yeah but jeff we went down you know i, I effectively just threw out 10 ide- rough ideas for a song uh for songs mm-hmm. and the way that we work really well together just because i mean we're basically we're brothers at this point um we jump right in and help shape it and craft the music just right in the studio. Um, right. So, you know, half, half of the, uh, half of the music was written in the actual studio itself. Um, mm-hmm. half of the lyrics were written in the studio itself. And that's, that's kind of why we went to, when, when we go, when we record records, we like to go into different inspirational areas and studios to be able to get that cool, cool inspiration stamp on our music. Talk about an inspirational studio. We're going to talk about Austin, Texas. We're talking with Iris Drive. All three guys, go check them out, irisdrive.com. They're on Facebook, Instagram. Go to Spotify and listen to their music and also YouTube. Check out their videos. You headed to Austin, Loved and Lonely, the Austin Sessions Volume 1. You recorded at Orb Studios. First, whose idea was to go, hey, let's go to Austin, guys, and go to Orb Studios? Well, we, we were originally going to go to New York and then the pandemic hit New York shut down. We, we, uh, we found the, we found the state that uh, didn't give a shit about, uh, about COVID. <laughs> yeah, and Texas. they really didn't. <laughs> and said, and said, what's the music city in the state that doesn't, that, that, that doesn't know that the pandemic exists and Austin came first on that list. Nice. Did the sound change from the Nashville sessions to the new one? 
Yeah, Andy, do you want to talk a little bit about how the sound changed? Yeah, well, I, th I think I think in the Nashville we we were really uh, strongly Americana, right? And there was a lot of uh, influence that came out of Nashville, especially recording down there. We recorded at the House of Blues Studios, and there was just so much energy and uh, and just it's so Nashville, right? I mean, so we really we really gravitated towards yeah. that sound when we were in there. And like Ryan said, we go down there with kind of a skeleton of the songs. We got a great idea. We got the lyrical pattern, everything else, but the song really isn't written. So when we go down there, we kind of like. Uh, dive into what what we're feeling at that time and and that that becomes a sound so when we went down to austin it was the same thing we had a whole bunch of songs and we're and we just dove right in uh you know felt what was going on out there and and what inspired us at the time so it was definitely a, a, a little bit i mean it's not it, it's not so far different where it's like oh we're playing americana oh wait we're playing metal it's nothing like that but the, you can feel the difference of it yeah, and the difference in the record for us is a is a is a cool departure because we went from you know the the, the first record had kind of a, a coherent, consistent sound from front to back with a mix of uh, electric rock tunes to more singer songwriter acoustic tunes. The, this record uh, all it has it goes all the way from like a full rock sound down to just strip down me singing and Matt playing an acoustic guitar, right? Like, uh, and so we, we varied the sound quite a bit on a lot of these songs. I've been to Austin once. Had you guys been to Austin, Texas? I mean, the, the vibe in Austin is, is different than anywhere else that I've been. But for, for me, this was my first time in Austin. And actually, when we went to Nashville, that was my first time in Nashville also. Now, Matt, I saw a post on Facebook. You're a runner. You ran a half marathon. You said you were going to run another one in Nashville in April, and your goal was to run under a nine-minute mile. Yeah, Did I didn't quite it? break that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a hot run, and it and it was I did it. I think I was ten minutes slower than my first one the month before, so I wasn't far off. But it was uh, I didn't make my goal, but it was still a lot of fun. Yeah, if you're not, yeah, Jeff, you're not supposed to call him out on uh, the radio. He <laughs> you already deleted that post. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the archives. Yeah. Well, you you mentioned that you guys grew up together. Did you guys grow up then in the Seattle area, and, and you're all still living around the area? Yep. Yep. Yeah. We uh we we grew up uh at the north end out here um in Washington. Well, uh, Lake Stevens is, is our is our hometown. We all played sports together. My dad was both of these guys as coach, and I mean when we when we say we grew up together, we really did. It was uh um we we were we were friends from the beginning. I think uh, uh, both me and Minikin, we were that was our first friend back in like I don't even know what second grade or something like that. No, it was preschool. Yeah. Yeah, preschool. We yeah. Met in preschool. Montessori Preschool in Everett, yeah. Wow, in Everett, Washington. And, and are you guys in Bellevue now? Ryan's in Bellevue. Okay. Right, we're, 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 we're a little bit spread out now, but we're still pretty close to each other. And Ryan, you work at what, at this Blueprint Technologies? Yeah. What do you do there? What is that? Um, it's a, I, I own it. It's my company. Um, and it's a, it's a tech company up here in, uh, in the Seattle area, but it's also nationwide. It's a, it, a company that specializes in data technology for large corporations. And Matt, you're a good looking guy. What is this real? That you're, you're single, you're a guitarist, you're in a band. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Yeah, I'm actually recently single. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but I am single and I am a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> if, if that's good or bad go check him out he's at irisdrive.com they're on facebook instagram go follow him the brand new album it just came out yesterday loved and lonely the austin sessions volume one well, we played the new one what makes you beautiful you, you said ryan the songs are all over the place this one's more of kind of a stripped down we even hear andy playing the piano tell us what what's this song about it's a, it's a, um, it, it's like a lot of our songs, it's a song, a song about, uh, it's a song about a girl, but it's also about kind of the, the perspective that guys take. And for us, like it's it, for our journeys, right. Trying to understand our place in the world. And so this is really about the, um, about how people like us um, or guys like us find a lot of inspiration in females. And the song is about the actual recognition of somebody else that's actually inspiring you to be able to do and play music and be better and be a better person. Yeah, and Andy, your son, Gavin, he's 15. 
You've been trouncing all over the world playing tennis, but he also plays the piano. Was he? Was this dad hounding him? Was he inspired? What? You know, it's uh, it's it's crazy. He actually started out um in, on drums, and he just and he loved it. He was following my foot, and I was like, cool. And then uh, high school hit, and he was like, hey, dad, I want to play jazz piano. And I was like, man. <laughs> Right here, right here, buddy. Uh, so he he took up jazz piano this year and just loved it, just crushing it. How the hell do you go from the drums to piano? Let's see how. Um, let's. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you started with the drums first, or the piano first as a kid, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I, I started. Um, I started as a classical pianist when I was young. I, I was, yeah, I was playing when I was super, super young, and I didn't hit the drums till I hit uh, about middle school. Wow. One of my coolest memories of Andy when we were kids is playing the ragtime type style music on the piano. <laughs> I really dug that. That was awesome. Yeah, that was that was my uh, that was my wheelhouse back in the day. Yeah, that that was when Andy was showing off to everybody. He, he did. yeah. <laughs> what uh, you, you now, Andy? You called Matt Minikin. I imagine every you guys have names for each of you since you've known each other. What what's each other's secret name or what's what's your guys' <laughs> nicknames? Uh, Matt usually goes by Minnie in our circle. If if you yell out Minnie, he's gonna he's gonna respond pretty fast. I'm usually uh, I'm usually known as just Roscoe. Um, uh, Ryan has a multitude of names. You know, he's the leader. We 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 can call him anything, and he'll answer. Shit, dad, asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much anything. I was gonna say mostly on the negative side yeah, is what exactly. we're, is, 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 is the love that Ryan gets. Exactly. I'm the, I'm the one that goes in and it, this literally happened in the one of the songs on the record was uh, we actually recorded it. Uh, we recorded the bulk of the record down in Austin and then recorded a couple songs down in Memphis um, at uh, Sam Phillips recordings. And we were staying in Nashville with our producer. And so we went down to Met in Memphis and recorded a couple songs and we got back to Nashville. And there was like literally like two hours left in the day in the studio. And I was said, we played that song too slow. We played it too slow. We have to re-record the entire thing. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? We have to re-record <laughs> the entire song in two hours. Um, and we, I said, it is too slow. And we re-recorded it. So that was a lot of, yeah, you're a dick. Uh, <laughs> do it. Hey, but you got to do that sometimes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, it was it was the right call. But, I mean, at the, at the time, yeah. we were like, yeah. are you fucking serious? <laughs> at the time, you wanted to wring his neck. But uh, <laughs> now you're happy that he that he that he did that to you. Oh yeah. What what's the goal, guys? This is your second full length. You had the Nashville sessions. You got the the new Austin sessions coming out. I mean, you're just throwing this shit out there. Is this for fun? I mean, obviously we're not going to make a million bucks. What what's the goal? I mean, honestly, the goal is just to keep uh, keep playing. Um, we're, we're family, man. Just to keep inspiring playing and just creating it's it's so much fun like for me this is for me personally is that when, when you're when you're in your 20s you're trying you know you're trying to make it you're doing everything you possibly can to try to get a record deal well when you're we're, we're a little bit older now and now it's just it's it's so much fun to just go out there and create and just have people enjoy the show when they come enjoy the music and like and getting comments back of like oh man that song did this this and this and i would just i felt it that day and it's just that's that means everything just to inspire and create. Yeah. I mean, do you think, cause we're older, it's less stressful or there's less well, nerves, less, you know, whatever. I mean, it's, it's, it's less stressful when you got 20 bucks in your bank account. Finally. I mean, when you're young, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you, you get, you get paid that 20 bucks on a gig and you got a, you know, a large pizza and a tank of gas, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Financially it's less stressful. And, and we can relax and, and have a good time. How do we feel about being an indie artist right now? I mean, the pandemic, I mean, hurt, but also I think it kind of helped us a little bit because maybe maybe we were working while other people weren't. What, what do we think is being an indie artist? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's um, you know you're you're exactly right that the the big artists that have to have that momentum to keep their machine running and everything shuts down for two years. That's a lot of pressure, and you're kind of seeing some of the the outcome of that on the back end. For us, we just we love we love indie record stores. We grow up grew up in them. We love indie music. We grew up with it, so we love being part of the community. It's pretty cool. I mean, we ended up having uh, the Beggars Group take a look at us, so they're actually reviewing our music right now. And it would be awesome just to be able to like be able to pick up some small record deal with a cool set of indie record labels, and then be able to run on the you know regional tours and 
ideally get our music picked up on a soundtrack or something like that. It's just, you know, we just, we, we love the whole process to be able to just be involved in it. And we're, we're super fortunate that we're able to actually be inspired to be able to create the music, but then also inspire the rest of the folks that are in their, our community. Yeah, that's kind of nice. You're starting to feel a little love or people are reaching out to you because you guys are doing everything. You don't have a PR person or anybody right now, do you? No. Andy Orozco. We do. <laughs> Andy Orozco Productions. Yeah. That's what it, <laughs> Yeah. Well, go go see these guys. IrisDrive.com. They're having two shows this weekend, Saturday and Sunday night, album release shows. Tell them where it's at, guys. Yeah, the first show is in uh, uh, at Curlew Cellars in Woodenville, uh, Washington. So the second show on Sunday is at uh, uh, Wicked up in Everett, Washington. On your first album, The Nashville Sessions, the first track, I, I love the sound clip. What's your favorite beer? So I got to ask you guys, what's your favorite beer? PBR, baby. <laughs> you know it. That uh, that sound clip came about. It's pretty, it's pretty. There's two. There's two clips in there, dude. Do you, Jeff, do you know what that what movie is from? Uh. Uh-uh. It's uh, from so so we were we were in the booth and our producer Dustin was telling this story about his uh, crazy asshole uncle that would uh, that would yell at him when he had anything other than um, I think it was Miller Miller Light. It was Coors Light because we were drinking that in the uh, uh, we were drinking that in the studio. It reminded me of that clip from Blue Velvet, so I played it in the uh, in the sound booth, and he recorded. It. He's like, "Holy shit, this got to be how you kick a record off." <laughs> so, yeah, you you can't go wrong with Dennis Hopper. <laughs> blue velvet i'll have to check that out uh i lived off Pabst blue ribbon in college that's uh so the two shows this weekend the new one is loved and lonely the austin sessions volume one will there be a volume two yes sir so to so, be continued yeah. no it's actually so we went down there so we 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 went down to austin and we recorded we actually recorded 16 songs in five days so we were a little bit more prepared, a little bit better prepared, <laughs> and then finished up the other four in Memphis. So they, we actually have 20 songs. Um, the next record comes out on August 30th, and it's called Sacred and Scarred. And it'll be, uh, it's kind of, they juxtapose each other from a sound and content standpoint. The writing is a, the, the writing is a little different on each, on each record. So there will be a volume two. Yes, go sir. and follow them. Go like them. IrisDrive.com. They're on Facebook, Instagram. Go to Spotify. Listen to the new one. Actually, go buy the damn thing. Go and get it. Now it is out. Now, Loved and Lonely, The Austin Sessions, Volume 1. Ryan, Matt, Andy, thanks so much, guys, for coming on. Thank you. Thanks, it's Irish Drive. It's the takeover. CBJRadio.com.